Welcome to week 10. This week we will focus on the finance side of managing grant budgets and how to appropriately manage the grant budget as part of the grant management process. We will discuss program budgets and how to efficiently manage the financial obligations that come along with a grant award. Readings for this week are posted in Moodle and assignments include a discussion forum, quiz, and assignment number 10 where you will review a budget fee actual expense report and describe the financial status of the grant program. What does it mean to manage a grant budget? In a quick summary, it means that you, as the grantee, will ensure that funds spent on grant project-related expenses are appropriate to the project, allowable, and within approved budget line items. A grant-funded project will almost always have a project budget that breaks down into budget breaks down the budget into categories. The most common budget categories include the following: personnel costs. These are, these are costs that include salary and wages as well as fringe benefits if these are offered through your organization. Employees are paid through an annual salary amount or hourly wage. Fringe benefits are additional compensation offered to employees that includes that often includes health insurance and life insurance and possibly tuition assistance, gym memberships, child care subsidies, employee discounts, and more. Travel. This budget category could include transportation expenses for conference or training travel that is relevant to the project or local travel expenses such as mileage and parking fees. Equipment. Generally in grant budgets, equipment exceeding $5,000 is included in the equipment line for grant budgets. For example, a new piece of lab equipment such as a microscope or a new boat to conduct research field work would be included in the equipment line. Consultants and subawards. This budget category includes funds that pass through to other individuals or entities. They will be paid to someone else to do work associated with the grant project. In week nine, we talked about the differences between these two categories. Materials and supplies. This category includes general office supplies, such as pens, paper, presentation materials, etc. Staff computer and hardware supplies, printing and copying, and other material or supplies that is needed to implement your project. Staff computer stations are included in the materials and supplies budget category and not in the equipment category as they are usually less than the $5,000 per unit threshold. Indirect expenses. Indirect expenses are included in grant budgets to offset the administrative expense for grant, pro for grant projects. For example, the utility bills, uh, keeping the lights on, support for your business office, administra administrative support, etc. Indirect expenses are usually calculated as a percent of the total project or a subsection of the budget. Each grantor has different guidelines for what indirect rate is allowable, and this needs to be calculated with each new project budget, again, if allowable. Why is it important to understand the different budget categories? It's important to understand each category as it relates to allowable and unallowable expenses. Again, all funders have different guidelines and some guidelines are very clear, while others may fall into the gray area of interpretation. Most of the time, the grant budget that was included in your grant proposal was approved by the grantor and is then included in the grant award agreement. Sometimes there will be budget adjustments made during the proposal review process. A grantor can come back and say, we like your proposal and want to fund the project, but we will not cover some specific expenses. This could be a piece of equipment, travel, or indirect expenses. Or they could say, we like your project and we'll award you $50,000 of the $60,000 requested. In either case, the program director would revise the budget as well as the scope of the project to align with the budget if necessary. Allowable and unallowable expenses. This is fairly self-explanatory. Allowable expenses are expenses that the grantor will allow in the budget. Grantees can use grant funds to pay for these expenses. 
Unallowable expenses are the expenses that the grantor will not approve as line items in the grant budget. Understanding the allowable and unallowable expenses in your grant budget is important to ensure your organization does not incur an expense that they will have to pay from another source, such as from the general operating budget or another program fund. Understanding allowable and unallowable expenses will also help to maintain compliance with the grant award guidelines. Different grantors may have different guidelines for allowable and unallowable expenses. For example, while a federal agency may allow the inclusion of indirect expenses, a family foundation may not, or a specific program will only fund the purchase of project equipment and may not allow grant funds to be used for staff salaries. Every grant program will have different guidelines. For federal, for federal grant awards, these guidelines are outlined in the 2 CFR Part 200 Section Subpart E Cost Principles. In this guidance, there are certain unallowable expenses that will raise red flags with federal grant program officers. The following are examples of unallowable costs in federal grant budgets. Alcohol and entertainment. You cannot include tickets to a Broadway show or a round of drinks into a project committee, into a project committee meeting, at least not funded with federal grant dollars. Certain travel is also unallowable as well. Programs cannot purchase first class tickets with federal funds or cover the travel cost of your best friend to tag along to your presentation. Some public relations material are also questionable. Promotional swag material that is not specific to the awarded project may be questionable. Projects must clearly justify how such expenses are directly relevant to the project intent. These are just a few examples of unallowable costs with federal funds. There are additional guidelines outlined in subpart E of the uniform guidance. Private, private grant programs through foundations and other funds will also have unique budget guidelines that must be followed to maintain compliance. Program directors and grant managers should understand the allowable and unallowable expenses under each grant program that they are working with and have this understanding at the time of the budget development in the proposal stage. This helps to minimize budget questions if a grant award is made. However, it is also good to maintain and revisit this list as the budget and the project are implemented to limit budget issues along the way. There will also be times when a budget needs to be adjusted during the project period. Some adjustments can be expected with most grant projects. There are always variables that impact the original proposed project and thus the projected budget. For example, let's say a grant project included $50,000 in personnel to hire a project coordinator at the start of the project, but it took the organization three months to post the position conduct interviews, and hire the correct person, person for the job. In this case, there are three months of personnel costs in the budget that will not go to personnel due to the timing of the new hire. A project may request to reallocate this amount to another budget line item to use within the overall scope of the project, say to travel or supplies. So the portion of the budget funds in the salary line that will not be used for salary expenses in this case, three months of personnel cost, will be moved to another line item such as travel or supplies to be used as the project progresses. What is the process of budget reallocations? This is another process that varies by grantor and varies within organizations. As a general rule, grantees have the flexibility to reallocate approved grant budget line items within 10% of the total line item before they must request permission from the funder. This means if the approved equipment line, line item in a grant budget has $10,000, but the piece of equipment that was purchased was only $9,000, a grantee could reallocate that remaining $1,000 to another line item, say supplies, without a formal budget amendment request. For budget reallocations that exceed the 10% threshold, you should communicate with your funder about the process to request a budget reallocation. 
Sometimes this is as, as simple as an email with a brief justification, while other times it may require a full budget amendment that will be signed by both parties, as we discussed earlier in the course when we talked about agreement modifications. Program directors and grant managers should find guidance on this process in the grant agreement or award documents. And as is the case with so many grant topics, if there are any questions, reach out to the grantor to inquire. The project director or principal investigator is not always solely responsible for the budget management. They likely work with different departments within their organization to track project expenditures and hire new employees that are paid out of grant funds. Let's talk about a few instances. Human resources. If your grant project includes any kind of personnel, you will need to coordinate with your organization's human resource department to post and hire new employees following your organization's policies. You will also need to work with your payroll department to ensure that grant funded positions are charged to the correct account, so payroll charges are connected to the grant fund. How this is coordinated varies across organizations and institutions. Purchasing department. If your project plans to make certain types of purchases, you may need to work with your purchasing department to ensure items are purchased following the correct procurement guidelines. Procurement guidelines ensure a standard and ethical process for entities to make purchases, hire consultants and vendors, and bid on projects. Entities may have their own procurement policies, and some funders will also have procurement guidelines that must adhere, that they must adhere to with the use of grant funds. This is especially notable with federally funded projects. Many federal agencies will require grantees to follow federal guidelines that are outlined in the grant agreement and can be referenced in the uniform guidance. Grant managers should have an understanding of this process before purchases are made. Your finance or business department. As we have stated before, grant projects will need to collaborate with the business or finance department from the very beginning of grant award implementation. In most cases, there will be an internal procedure for creating new account codes and to put in place expenditure processes. The business department will also either complete or assist the program director with financial grant reporting. It is always a good idea to maintain frequent and keep open communication with this office throughout the entire project period. Working with the appropriate departments in your organization is not only a good grant management tool, but it will also, also make the oversight and the implementation of your grant funded project more efficient and likely easier. There are so many moving parts along the grant cycle from proposal development to the closeout of an award. Ongoing communication is key to effectively managing a grant budget. Communication between program staff, between departments, and with the grantors. This communication can be maintained through regular budget monitoring, making sure there are systems in place to track expenses as they need to be tracked, and a clear expense approval process. Every organization is different and will set this process up in various ways using different resources such as accounting and grant management software. There's not necessarily a right or a wrong way to do this. It's most important to have a system in place from the beginning that will work for all parties involved. 